So, okay, so let's uh, uh, do some experiments with that in, in MATLAB. So I still want my X to be completely random. Uh, let's also choose 20 points we started with. Let's rent my X and uh, X sort my X and uh, put zero on the left and one on the right. Right, so let me see. I get an X that is uh, it's pretty randomly spaced, right? I get a huge interval from here to here, but that's fine. And let's discuss a different way that is uh, very useful in constructing finite element matrices. So that is to construct a matrix, uh, to construct a matrix in an element by element way. So. Our domain is split into elements, right? So the first element, let's say between zero between x zero and x one, the second element between x one and x two. Every basis function is a very nice function within each element. Although in between elements you may have discontinuities in derivatives and things like that. So It'll be great if we can construct a matrix for every element and then assemble them into a bigger matrix. So what is the matrix per element? Well, it's very simple. The matrix per element is just a, if you focus, if you still stick to the weak form and imagine the whole domain is that element. Right? For example, I have my weak form being minus uh, partial u partial g so so a of we are trying to construct a, well okay so we are trying to construct a, a i j which is equal to the weak form applied to g i and g j right it is equal to the negative of the derivative of g i times the derivative of g j all right so this domain in the big matrix we ultimately want to construct is the whole domain. But let's construct first an element matrix first. So let's say an element matrix for element K. Okay, so this matrix is the same thing but integrated only from x k minus 1 to x k so integrated only over a single element okay so first of all this matrix only needs to be okay uh, uh, it's only non-zero for a small number of rows and small number of columns the number of rows which the matrix is not is non-zero is the same as the number of columns for the matrix is non-zero because uh, uh, it's symmetric, and these rows and columns are the rows and columns for which the ba corresponding basis function is non-zero in that element. So for for our piecewise linear function and the nodal basis function, tell me what is the size of the matrix that are non-zero? What is the non-zero sub matrix? It's two by two. Yes. It only we only need to construct a two by two matrix. So this is two by two, okay? And uh, basically, we only need to construct the matrix for a element k of, uh, let's see. So element zero is here, okay? So only it's k to k plus one and k to k plus one, right? We only need to construct this matrix. And now, because both because both uh, basis functions are linear, so all these derivatives are constant. And uh, uh, let me just uh, not repeat what we did last uh, uh, last lecture, and just uh, give you the answer to this. Because these are constant and has magnitude one over the size of the interval, right? So so let's say delta xk we define it as x 
k plus 1 minus xk, then this small matrix is just uh, uh, 1 over, actually minus 1 over delta xk, minus 1 over delta xk, 1 over delta xk, and 1 over delta xk. Right, so this is the matrix we need to construct per element. Right? Uh, I don't think there is a factor of 2 because this, uh, the product is basically the derivative of each one function is either plus 1 over delta xk or minus 1 over delta xk. So the product is 1 over delta xk squared, the domain is delta k, uh, delta xk. Yeah? Exactly. The factor of two or or the um, or the summation starts when you look at the big matrix, which is composed of the summation of the smaller matrices. Right. So, so the only difference between the big matrix and small matrix is that the corresponding entries are integrated over the entire domain, which is then the summation of the integral over all subdomains. So if you stamp the smaller matrices on top of each other with the corresponding indices, you automatically get the big matrix. So for the one-dimensional case, it's very simple. You get the first element matrix is 2 by 2. The second element matrix is also 2 by 2, but it overlaps with the first one, just on one entry. The third one overlaps with the second one. The fourth one overlaps with the third one. So etc. And you get added elements, uh, so so you get added elements here, you get added elements here. This is where why the diagonal becomes in general larger magnitude than the off diagonals. Or if all the elements are uniform, uh, if all the delta x k's are the same, then you get factor of twos over here. Alright. And you don't get a factor of 2 over here in the first element. Um, that's actually what we are going to see is going to make a difference if you have a Newman boundary condition. If you have Dirichlet boundary condition, the first row and column gets removed and you have factor of 2 everywhere. Yes? So, so, so this is looking at the matrix in a particular element element k right so element 0 would be here element 1 would be here and uh, element 2 would be here okay if you if you decompose the integral from 0 to 1 into an integral over all the elements uh, you get the summation over the smaller matrices All right, so let's try this way of constructing the bigger matrix. So let's construct our dx to be x2 to end minus x1 to end minus 1. So this will help us construct the element matrices. Okay, so let's put our A to be this bigger matrix. A, let's say all, is going to be zeros n plus 1, right? Because I have... Uh, Actually, the, 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 the dx is okay. So, so my n is actually the number of interior points. So, a all is actually n plus two, right? Included, uh, I put uh, x is of length n in the interior, and I put uh, two boundaries at the both ends. So, my a should be uh, size n plus two. Then I'm going to be looping over all the elements. So, for i, for k goes from one to n plus one. I have n plus one elements. Right, a element for this particular element should be just a two by two matrix of uh, minus one over dxk, one over dxk, one over dxk, minus one over dxk. Right, so that's my element matrix. Okay, and then a all starting from k to k plus 1 and k to k plus 1 is equal to itself plus, this is just uh, doing accumulation, plus a element. 
all right okay so I get my matrix so if you look at that it's uh, pretty similar to what we constructed uh, uh, last time